Welcome to Benny Knits. I am your host Benny and this is the eighth episode and I am filming it three weeks from my last episode approximately on September 8th. I did mean to get this out last week but school got in the way. Um, so we're going to start off with what I am wearing. So I am wearing my Stanham Cardigan by Blacker Yarns, which was knit out of my hand spun. It has a nice cable raglan detail. And yeah, so the bluer stripe, which is more of a lavender lilac color, is a clone forest that I spun and dyed. And then the brown was a fin sheep that I spun up. And it's a natural undyed brown and yeah so it fits really well it's comfortable it's warm um, not much else to tell about it so finished objects I finished one thing completely and then one thing is mostly completed but I'll show that in the next section so for a completed object I have my Zuzu's Petals, which was designed by Karina Spencer. This is going to be spun, this was knit out of my hand spun, a merino silk from I believe Ashland Bay. I could be wrong, I've had, I had the fiber for like a decade before I spun it. And so it's just an easy, lace pattern. I did do the larger gauge version. Normally I do the smaller gauge version, but just the way, how heavy the yarn was did require the heavier gauge version. I knit this on a size 10 yarn. And let's see if I can put it on briefly. Make my hair even more entertaining. But yeah, it just fits like this. It's a nice cowl. It works great in the winter because it keeps your neck warm and your chest in case there's any gap with your uh, coat. Yep, so this is, I think, probably like my fifth or over my fifth version of these. Knit quite a few. Um, they're fun, relatively fast knits. So it's always kind of fun to do them. So that's the only thing I've finished, finished. However, I have been working and have pretty much finished my Twist and Turn Shawl by Stephen West, which is this. So I did uh, the modification on these edges so that instead of having the chevrons up here again, I would have more of a smooth profile instead of a sharp edge profile in the back. So it just kind of blends in well. So I have been making the little I-cord accents. I have finished this side. Yes, I did finish this side. But now I have to do... this side which I haven't done yet so this is completely knit out of hand spun I used a gray fleece which is this which was undyed um, not 100% sure on what sheep breed it was and then the red was a North Con Border Leicester and Romney Cross, which I dyed with Kool-Aid. It's kind of a oily color, kind of a really light tan before I dyed it. So I got some of that dyed up. And then the purple, which was my accent color, was a Polworth braid from Shirsty Cat Designs. That was purple. Um, doesn't really name her colorways for the fiber, but it was very fun to spin that. And so I've 
basically finished the knitting on that. I did an I-cord bind off on the edging. So the edging is just outside of doing this modified twisted rib, half twisted rib actually. Then just did garter stitch up here, did a little bit of the accent color and then some of the contrast besides just the mane. Then I bound off with the mane color. So that is that very large shawl. Um, I haven't really figured out how to wear it. Let's see. Kind of like that. It does sit really nicely on the shoulders, but right now it's just too warm. But yeah, this is the wrong side. That was a lot of fun to knit. I think next episode, hopefully, it'll be completely done. And I will have finished all of my little I-cord decorations. So I'm just doing the I-cord out of the purple Polworth accent color. And what I'm doing is I am casting on three stitches with a provisional cast on, so that's why this blue is here. And then I'm knitting the I-cord and I'm grafting the I-cord together instead of having to sew the two ends together after casting on and casting off. So I just find that's a little bit easier for me to do and I, I actually get it done if I do it that way. Um, so yeah, it doesn't take too long. It's just kind of tedious to do, so I haven't really done it. But hopefully I'll have that done soon. And then this will be a finished object. Okay. Put that down. And then for the next object in progress is my market bag, which is the Eileen bag by Hannah Ingalls knit out of uh, Joanne Fabrics, their Big Twist yarn in the colorway, I think it was Community or Caring or something. Hold on one second. It was, yep, Big Twist living in the community colorway. That's the label. Um, focus. Okay. And it's just a simple. Knit two together, yarn over, mesh pattern. I did do a provisional cast on on the bottom. So when it came time to do the second, the other long side after knitting flat, I was just able to pick up stitches from the cast on, from the provisional cast on instead of having to pick up from a cast on edge. So that is the bottom. This is the uh, mesh, which is kind of stretchy. It's just 100% acrylic, so it is washable. This is the handle, and I'm knitting this on a size, I knit most of this on a size eight needle, and then I switched for a size seven on the ribbing here, and then here. So this is the handle, which is knit on a size seven. And it'll connect over here, kind of like that, when it's actually ready. It's got a little bit ways to go. Um, it's used, let's say, probably going to be like one and a half balls by the time I'm done. But worth it. Had a lot of fun doing it. I should have it done by this coming up weekend the 14th yes the 14th is saturday 
I should have, I'm intending to have it done earlier in the week, but should have it done by then. And then one more knitting project. That's, well, two more actually. So first is, this is the back of the vest that I'm knitting. Trying a different shoulder shaping method, which is sometimes called the European shoulder but where you do essentially increases to create the shoulder seam so it's on the back more instead of completely on top and it's not like a raglan. So this is the back of the neck, these are the shoulders, this will be a vest. I am essentially self-grafting it. Um, this is a hand-spun Falkland that I spun up a couple of years ago. That. I have this ball, which will not be that much. And then I have another ball, which is this. Don't know why my end's so long. This ball. And then I have another skein in case I need it as well. Um, this was a couple years ago now I did this and it was primarily a tour de fleece project i think that i ended up finishing after which it was i think 12 ounces of falkland um i think the dyer is no longer in business i think it was highland handmaids i'm not 100 percent sure they're i don't think they're dying anymore so it's kind of a moot point with them I'll try to edit that out, but then my next project is my Progress Pride socks, which are the Mercury socks by Kim Drotter and Kim McKenzie. Um, it's a little interesting with her name, the designer's name, because it does seem to have changed at some point, but this I have modified it to be toe up so that it is just easier to do two at a time. I find toe up two at a time a little bit easier than top down sometimes. Either way works. So that is what this is. And the yarn is from Valkyrie Fibers. It is her Progress Pride colorway on the Merino Nylon base. Let's see. So I'm making some progress. Um, this has been kind of my go-to-ish project. Um, I haven't been working on it as much because I've been trying to finish the shawl and the market bag before too long. And then I started the vest because I needed something bigger to work on as well. So that is all of the knitting I have been working on. Yes, yep, that is all the knitting. And then I do have a little bit of spinning. Not that you can really tell, but I have been working some more on the brown fleece that I have. Brown fiber, I should say. It's not a full fleece, but been working on spinning that up so I got some more of that done you can't really tell but I did get some more done on this um, I've been spinning it on my Starling Mini which is my trusty electric wheel um, I currently don't have space for my treadle wheels but I did actually add a new spinning device So behind me, you can see a kick spindle up there. I don't use it. I find it to uh, require too much foot action to keep it going. I don't find it very relax, not necessarily relaxing, but it's a lot of having to use to keep it going. It just doesn't stay going like a spindle. You just have to constantly 
keep going and it's not a rhythmic motion as treadling a wheel is so it's kind of not working out for my how my body works but i picked up last weekend actually a support spindle from a relative who isn't using it anymore um, and the support spindle bowl so it does actually have a bowl with it and i haven't tried to use it yet since i got it but i will at some point um, it's just a nice wood it's got a metal tip Let's see if i'll focus on the tip Apparently we're not going to focus on anything but me, but yeah, it's just got a simple metal tip. It's nice. It's lightweight. And then I just, the bowl has a little kind of stone insert for where the tip goes so it doesn't damage the tip or the bowl, which is what it could do with that metal tip, the sharp metal tip. And that is all of my spinning. Um, for weaving, I have started winding a warp for a throw, which will be my next weaving project. I'm apparently now throwing things at myself. Just a journal, so nothing important. So, let's see if we can read this. So this is kind of my notes about how much, how many ends and how long I need it to be. Um, yeah, so it kind of tells me, okay, I'm doing this many. I want it to be this wide in the reed, which is gonna be full width, which is 40 inches on my loom, which is right here. You may have noticed I did actually rearrange my furniture. So my loom's now on this, side of the room instead of on a different side but so it's going to be 40 inches on the loom and it's going to be eight ends per inch so i have was it 320 ends and then i'm going to add two ends per edge outside of the reed for selvage for a floating selvage and yeah, so then it's going to have a main pattern and then two and then two edging patterns, not edging patterns, edge patterns. So the middle is going to be one. One twill pattern, that's what it was. I was going to say tweed in, not a tweed pattern, one twill pattern in the middle and then a separate twill pattern on either edge which will work with the original tool, the center pattern. So it'll kind of flow into the other pattern. Um, but yeah, now, so that'll be what's going on the loom next, which will probably be in a couple of weeks. I just have to have the time to actually finish winding my warp and then get it on the loom. And then I have to take some time and go to Lowe's and get some of these sticks that are the full width of the loom so that they work better than what I've been using. And let's see, other than that, I've been helping a relative do some house cleaning. And as part of that, I took back some items I knitted for my grandmother before she passed away. I would kind of show them just for fun and entertaining sake. So this was, I believe this was her 95th birthday. This was a Zuzu's Petals that I knit out of hand spun for her. Um, I think it was a BFL. I don't remember exactly what it was. And then kind of matching, which was the BFL and actually a Merino, where these hexagon mitts, which let me see, I can show you how they, hold on, pull my sleeve back. So yeah, 
you get the nice hexagon shape around the thumb on there and then you increase down along here and then you join it's all garter stitch so you have all the ridges this was also hand spun and i think it was the bfl from the zuzu's petals and a merino that i had left over from something else for contrast so that you would have because you wanted some contrast can get with the ridges and then this was for her 90th birthday i had made her a little lace chalette well, or shawl i guess this is a commercial alpaca lace light yarn that i had uh, just a dark green and yeah so it just had a kind of a mesh through here and then into towards the end yeah so i did make other things that she also used on a regular basis but these were the things that i uh, brought back and I'll be going into my winter gear stash, which is where a lot of my shawls and scarves and cowls and fingerless mitts end up, just so I can use them at a later date. But I may need to reblock this at some point, just because it has been quite some time since it was blocked. That'll be fun. That'll be another day. I do actually have my blocking mats, which are kids' foam play mats, because they're cheaper that way. And I'll probably pin it out on that, because I think it's not so big that I can't do that. Some knit items and shawls, especially are too big to actually fit on my mat so I have to do them on like my bed or someone else's bed right now I can do it on my bed generally I just have to plan so I can sleep because I don't have a second bed and yeah so I think that's pretty much everything I've been working on this coming weekend I am planning on going to a fiber festival so I'll have lots of acquisitions then um, I haven't really brought in any new stuff recently. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And until next time.